spiritual leadership is a very special kind of love. We have viewers from all over the country and in other parts of the world, and many are not Catholic who are watching us. What is it that characterizes the spiritual responsibilities of an archbishop? Gee, I think I'm still trying to identify them so that uh, I can adopt them and grow into them. Uh, I, I can say to a degree, I think, what I feel the needs to be. I feel the need of, of uh, praying far more than I ever felt before. I've always recognized the criticality of prayer, but uh, in this current situation, uh, I find myself uh, just increasing the amount of time that I formally pray and the amount of time that I'm, I'm reflecting, uh, not simply on the problems, but on the need for divine assistance. Uh, in terms of the, the leadership itself, spiritual leadership, I, I think that there are, are two, two uh, factors that are absolutely indispensable. I believe you honestly, sincerely have to believe in the worth and dignity of every human person as made in the image and likeness of God. There can't be any sham about that and you can't make any exceptions. You have to, if you believe that the unborn is a person, then you have to have the same concern for the unborn. The person in a wheelchair, the handicapped, the elderly, those in the streets, the homeless, those in our soup kitchens, black, white, men, women. So that, I think, just has to pervade everything that you do. You have to ask that question about every plan you uh, initiate, every action in which you engage. Uh, whom am I dealing with? Why am I doing this? What is this for? Whom is it for? Uh, here we have almost two million Catholics and we have what, some seven and a half million people in the city and millions more in the uh, archdiocese. Everyone a person. So that's one. I think that has to be a passionate conviction. And the other, you really have to love. And it has to be a love that goes beyond mere liking. Uh, it has to be a love that's not repelled by people who don't like you. You can't simply cringe under criticism, uh, run away. Uh, if you're under siege, under attack, for attempting to articulate the, the truth, you have to say to yourself, I still have to love those people because uh, you're very critics, uh, those who might, uh, might uh, almost ferociously disagree with you. They're still persons. They're still made in the image and likeness of God. And you've got to love them. These at least are the two things that I, I try to use as... Uh, as criteria, whatever other mystical, magical qualities or charismatic gifts a spiritual leader should have, I don't know because I don't pretend to have them. In your very first uh, talk to us in the installation, the films that we showed, I noticed that you stressed uh, that people were basically good. I know that cab drivers, a lot of waitresses talked to me about it and it, you had reached them. And it was surprising. They, they, uh, they almost seemed shocked that somebody would affirm their goodness. Why is it so difficult for people to believe in their own goodness, and why do you address that topic so you often? Know, I think that's, a, that's an awfully important question, and I'm glad you, you made comment on the reaction among cab drivers and others. And I still find it wherever I go. I believe it so intensely. I believe that, uh, again, Everybody's made in the image and likeness of Almighty God. There's all this tremendous potential in there, and I think we have to keep telling people, you are good, or they're not going to recognize their potential for greatness, for being what they could be, what God intended them to be. If you tell people you're junk, you're no good, you're rubbish, uh, they have enough uh, to discourage them already. And I think their response is, well, if we're that bad, then there's no point in trying. Uh, what has happened? Why is the question uh, uh, a question at all? I think there has been so much in our society that has contributed to making people feel that they are basically no good. They are not only unloved, but they are unlovable, incapable of being loved. You're talking about sinners too, aren't you? I'm talking about sinners 
and I'm, I'm talking about people who think they're sinners and they're not sinners. I'm talking about people who think that everything they do is a sin. And that's not, as many people have, uh, I think, very unjustly alleged, because the Catholic Church has overemphasized the concept of sin. I don't think that's it at all. I think they've been given a sense of worthlessness. Look at the, look at the kids who are abandoned. Look at the huge number of broken marriages. Look at the instances in which, and I realize there are many lonely, difficult marriages, and it's awfully hard for people to, to live together, but this has to be considered. Every time a marriage uh, breaks up, do kids ask themselves, or is there an unconscious uneasiness, if you will, that my parents didn't love me enough to stay together to try to take care of me? And so, so many things contribute to a sense of worthlessness. We have about 30 seconds uh, left. I'd like to ask the big question. For you, who is Jesus Christ? Oh, that's the critical question. That's what all of us have to ask. For me, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, absolutely categorically, who, in whose image I was made and you were made and everybody I know was made. Archbishop, I think at that note we thank you so much for your visit to Christopher Close-Up. We hope we'll see you again soon.